Number 10, identify and label the Bronsted-Lowry acid, its conjugate base, and then the, uh, the Bronsted-Lowry base and its conjugate acid in each of the following equations. And then we have this mess over here. Are we even going to attempt to say this? I'll save you the pain. <laughs> All right, but we, have, but we have this whole big mess of a equation. But just know that there's four parts, one, two, three, and four. And these four parts will link up with these four, you know, identifiers. So we just basically have to find out which one is the Bronsted-Lowry acid, which one is the conjugate base, which one's the Bronsted-Lowry base, and the conjugate acid. So the first thing that we have to do here is we have to hook up the pairs. It's the easiest way to go about doing this type of question. I like to work from left to right, so I'm going to highlight this ion right here. Right, this whole mess, FeH2O5OH2+. So now I'm looking on the product side to find the corresponding pair. And like elements go with like elements. So this one has the iron in it, right, the Fe. So I go to the product side and I say, which one has the Fe? Oh, this one has the Fe. That's the corresponding pair. So I'm going to put that in green. So then on the flip side, your other pair should make sense. So it's kind of just like checking it out. This one has aluminum in it, right? ALH2O63+. And yeah, this one has aluminum in it as well. So we picked right. All right. Second thing to do is this conjugate nonsense. <laughs> it's not nonsense, but you guys get the drift. Um, conjugate just means the other part of the pair that you produce. And if you produce something, it's got to be on the product side. So the word conjugate is always going to be on the product side. So I can just say, okay, this has to be a conjugate something. I don't know whether it's the acid or the base yet, but I know the word conjugate has to be with these two ions. And then likewise, the actual Bronsted-Lowry acid and base, those are what you reacted with. So the Fe iron, this whole mess, it's got to be a Bronsted-Lowry something. I'll just label it BL. And then this aluminum one, also Bronsted-Lowry something. I just don't know which one yet. Now we're going to find who they actually are by looking at the pairs. Pick a pair. Doesn't matter. I'm going to go with the greens. Now look down here, guys. Remember, acids always have one more hydrogen than their conjugate base. And then likewise, for the base, you always have one less hydrogen, right? H plus, hydronium, hydrogen, basically the same thing, right? But the idea here is that if you're classifying something as an acid in, the, in a pair, it will always have one more hydrogen. So all we have to do here for these pairs is just find out how many total hydrogens there are. So let's see. I have a hydrogen here. There's two, but there's a five outside the parentheses. So two times five is a total of 10 hydrogens here. And then there's a lonely hydrogen here. So 10 plus one is 11 total hydrogen for this compound. Coming over here, I just have that two hydrogen here. There's a six outside of the parentheses. So you just have to times it. Two times six is 12. Okay. Acids always have one more. Between 11 and 12, this one has one more hydrogen. And the acid always has one more. So if that's the case, the FeH2O63 plus has to be the conjugate acid. And then, because of that, the other part of the pair has to be the base. Now, let's just do the same thing with the blues, right? This pair, the alh 2 O6, and I'll put that in black, and then the other one on the other side. So let's see. Here's my hydrogen. I have two of them, but there's six outside, so two times six is 12. Coming over here, I have two, five outside. Two times five is 10. Then there's that lonely hydrogen again, so 10 plus one is 11. 12 versus 11. Acids always have one more, so this has to be the acid. 12 beats out 11 by 1. 
So this is the Bronsted-Lowry acid, and then because of that, the other part is the base. And if you've noticed, there's only one acid and base per side, right, on the reactant and the product. So if you see that you do this type of question on a, qu a quiz or a test and you have two bases on one side or two acids on one side, just stop, go back, because you're only allowed one of each. So that's a good check, okay? So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. And tell your friends, tell your classmates that this YouTube channel exists. We also have physics and math videos on the channel as well. So maybe we can help you out with those classes. We'd love to help you out with those classes. And much more to come in the future. So hang tight. See you later. Bye-bye.